Hey guys, hey man, 6367 here. And look, a video! Not only that, it's a movie review! And what movie am I reviewing? <laughs> yep, the Three Stooges movie. Now, I never really grew up watching most Three Stooges content. The only exposure I got was those robotic Stooges shorts and literally two episodes of the new Three Stooges cartoons and the Swinging the Alphabet song. So I wasn't really a huge Three Stooges fan going in. But what do I think of the movie overall? Well, let's find out. Before we begin, let me point out that the film is separated into three acts and or episodes. I'm going to call them acts. As such, I will go over each act on their own as if they were their own thing before going over the movie as a whole. Act 1. More orphan than not. So the movie starts at an orphanage where some kids are playing kick the can when one of the nuns who work at the orphanage comes in and ruins the fun. Before I continue, this nun is honestly one of the best characters and I can't even remember her name. As such, I will call her Sister Squidward. So the orphans burst out into song... because... but thankfully Sister Squidward shuts them up. However, after some people who will never meet yeet a bag at the door of the orphanage, we meet the baby stooges. So is there a reason these people just yeeted a bag filled with babies like it was nothing? And who are the stooges' parents? And why do Mo and Larry have full heads of hair? After all the nuns get cutesy with the stooges, we cut to ten years later where the nuns are clearly terrified of the stooges. We then see the stooges trying to be dentists while operating on Sister Squidward. So, somehow the stooges have access to a table that can be used to hold a person down on one side and, and become a normal table once flipped. How? Why? Orphanage? What? After Mother Superior calls the boys for lunch, it's revealed that a rich couple is on their way to adopt a kid. And though with the amount of money it costs to adopt in this country, they're gonna have to be rich. I have a legitimate question. If they hate living with the Stooges, why does Mother Superior want them out of sight when the couple comes? I mean, yeah, she says that they scare off other couples and that they aren't ready. But couldn't she simply find someone who'd be willing and able to work with them and teach them how to properly act and be presentable? I mean, come on! It's like working with someone with special needs. There's a person who can and will work with them and make progress that others can't make them make. If that makes sense. And if you're asking how I know such thing, I have actual experience with people with special needs, and I will admit it is taxing, and I have had some who do get on my nerves, but you gotta have the right amount of patience and care in order to make progress with them. Sorry about that. So after deciding to hide the other kids in an attempt to get the Stooges adopted, one of the kids, Teddy, comes out of hiding. And after pulling the second biggest no you in history, it's revealed the parents wish to adopt Mo. How it's a no you is because the father gives a huge speech to Teddy, even though Moe's getting adopted. Because. No, seriously, that's always bugged me. How come the father gives Teddy a speech when Moe's getting adopted? Seriously, that's always bugged me. Like, was he trying to get his hopes up only to disappoint him? What kind of father does that? So after a surprisingly well-acted scene, Mo's adopted parents tell him that it's his birthday, even though it's technically his gotcha day. But regardless, he tries to convince the parents to go back and pick up Larry and Curly. But the parents decide to pull off the third biggest no-you in history, and drop Mo back off and pick up Teddy. So, did the parents give Teddy the exact same lollipop Mo had? Or do they just have lollipops lying around in their car? Also, I have got to admit it honestly hurts seeing Mo running after them wanting to go back. So, 25 years later, the Stooges somehow haven't been kicked out of the orphanage and are harassed by Sister Squidward for not fixing the bell. Oh, wait, didn't she want to quit 25 years ago? And how have none of the nuns aged? 
Are they bonded to the Energems from Dino Charge? So anyway, after one of the funniest scenes, Sister Squidward is sent to get the boys, where more funny scenes take place. And after a Gakko ad, Mother Superior reveals that the orphanage is shutting down. The Flying Dutchman then reveals that the orphanage needs to pay $830,000 to not shut down. I could have said that better, but I really don't care. But anyway, regardless, the boys then volunteer to go into the city and get the money. And Act 1 ends with another attempt at a musical number, which Sister Squidward once again thankfully shuts down. So overall, Act 1 is actually quite good, full of genuinely funny moments, and it does a good job of demonstrating the personalities of the boys very well. My only real problem, it's very hard to care about the kids at the orphanage considering I can't remember any of their names. Did they even have names? If they did, I can't remember. Act 2. The Bananas Split. So Act 2 begins not with the Stooges, but some random bitch and an asshole with a mustache. They go on about killing the lady's husband where they then run into the Stooges. And before I continue, I forgot the dude's name, so I'll call him Kenny. The lady I at least remember her name is Lydia. Mostly because the only other Lydia I know is from The Walking Dead. So Lydia goes to the boys and straight up tells them to murder her husband, and as such, Kenny pretends to be her husband and makes up some bullshit about having an incurable disease that will slip him into a coma and kill him. And as a result, he wants to be put down before he slips into the coma. So after an admittedly funny pun, Curly knocks Kenny in front of a bus, where he then has an encounter with a street sweeper, a kid on a pogo stick, and an arrow that Larry shot earlier. And after the Stooges follow Lydia home, it's revealed Kenny SOMEHOW survived his little dose of IF YOU'RE NOT AWAKE THIS WILL WAKE YOUR LAZY ASS UP, and they decide to go to the hospital to finish the job. So they go to the hospital, cross-dress, and get into one of the STUPIDEST SCENES! They get into a piss fight while using babies as the metaphorical guns. What the actual hell was the point of this scene? Apart from the writers telling kids, Hey, look, kids, P is funny. Anyway, they make it into Kenny's room, somehow have dynamite, and set it off in Kenny's cast. After somehow surviving that, Kenny lies about being cured. So the Stooges then get into a chase, where they burn a dude's chest with irons. Ouch. So after escaping the hospital, they bump into Teddy, who offers to give him a place to stay, but Mo refuses. We also get a funny joke where Curly tries talking on an iPhone with his eye. I'm dead serious. Oh yeah, Teddy's actually Lydia's real husband. Convenient! So after some weird subplot where the Stooges try selling fish at a golf course, I don't even get that how that works, they get chased again. But this time, the chase ends with the Stooges ending up in a supposedly empty building. And after a huge argument, the boys decide to split off. And after all that, Mo gets casted on... Oh, Jesus Christ. So that was Act 2, and honestly, it was... Meh. Very little legitimately funny moments compared to Act 1, and the subplot of Lydia and Kenny trying to kill Teddy comes right the hell out of nowhere. But I guess they had to pan out the movie somehow. But at what point during the writing process did they think to throw in the Stooges using babies in a piss fight? And the argument scene at the end, despite being stupidly cliched, is actually one of the best scenes in the film, with some good acting and well choreographed slapstick. And thus we reach the final act of the movie, No Mo Mr. Nice Guy. Good god, that took me like 10 takes to say right. So Act 3's beginning, honestly, is a bunch of filler. I mean, with Larry and Curly, it just starts with them selling ice cream at the zoo and they get into an incident where they get a peanut stuck in a dolphin's blowhole. But in terms of actual story, it starts when Larry and Curly go back to the orphanage to try to find Mo, where Sister Squid reveals that the reason the orphanage is shutting down is because the Stooges have caused so many incidents over the years to the point where the orphanage no longer has medical insurance. So after a montage of Mo putting the cast of Jersey Shore through hell, Larry and Curly go to see Teddy, where they instead run into Velma from Scooby-Doo. 
Oh, yeah, and Teddy's dad shows up and says something about the reason Mo went back is because they wouldn't adopt Larry and Curly. Whatever, that's not important. Afterwards, Larry and Curly realize the truth about Lydia and Kenny, but because they're lovable idiots, they're more concerned about a fucking snowman. Also, Velma apparently has a crush on Teddy. So after reuniting with Larry and Curly, it's revealed that the rat from the start of the movie is still alive because I don't know. Uh, oh yeah, they decide to go save Teddy. Whatever. So after some weird shenanigans take place, we get a scene that honestly kills me with how funny it is. Wait a minute. That's Mika from season 4 of The Walking Dead. So after barging into Teddy's room, Kenny reveals his plans to kill Teddy. And then, out of nowhere, Teddy's dad is revealed to be the true villain of the movie. I can't even with this. So after Teddy's dad reveals his motivation for wanting to kill his own son, they crash into a river where we get a fart joke. So after all that happens, the Stooges ask Teddy for the money. And in a shocking turn of events, he says no. And after a couple months, the boys feel bad about failing their mission. But surprise, there's a new orphanage. Because... Why? So Teddy and Velma come in and decide to adopt two kids. Well, three, because apparently they kidnapped a kid from a foster home. And after knocking Sister Squidward into the pool with a diving board, we end Act 3, and subsequently, the movie. Before I go over the movie in its entirety, let's talk about Act 3. It was alright. It's got its fair share of funny moments, but... Really nothing too special. I mean, unlike Act 1 and 2, this act really didn't have a scene that wowed me. Now as for the movie as a whole, it's actually pretty good. Good comedy, good acting, an overall fun experience. And I have to admit, this is probably what I would describe as a definitive Three Stooges movie. However, it sadly is imperfect. The subplots are ridiculous. Like, the deal with Lydia trying to kill Teddy, I get that the orphanage thing can't carry the whole movie, but does the B-plot have to be something completely unrelated? And what's the deal with Kenny and the lion? Where did that come from? And I'm sorry, but the subplot with that orphan girl being sick? I didn't care. And it's not because I'm heartless, but it's because I knew there were no real stakes. This is a PG movie. Obviously, they weren't gonna kill a little girl like that. Had there been actual stakes, I would have cared. Now, I know there are PG movies that have killed people before, but do you really think a Three Stooges movie is just gonna straight up say, oh yeah, that little girl's dead? Like, really? Yes, I know Disney tends to kill off parents, but we're not talking about Disney, now are we? If you want to debate this, we'll debate about it in the comments. But as of right now, I'm moving on. <sighs> it's not even that I hate Jersey Shore, because I have no intention of watching it. But why is this subplot in the movie? No, seriously. What was the writing process? When it came to putting Mo on Jersey Shore. What idiot thought of that? Now I would love to rant on about how stupid that is. But I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. So until next time. Hey man is out. Peace.